In this video we are looking at unit conversion. So we will look at the standard units, a different scale, converting volumes, so centimetres cubed to metres cubed and things like that, and then a few questions and then a harder exam example. So first of all, our standard units. So these are very important to know and a lot of conversions will relate back to these. So length, the standard unit we use is just metres. Now metres can be converted to kilometres, centimetres and millimetres in your exams. You might be expected to know those. Mass is often just kilograms and grams. You could have things like tonnes, but a lot of the time you'll get told the conversion between tonnes and kilograms, things like that. Time is often hours, minutes and seconds, and money is just pounds and pence. If you get asked a question on anything but these basic ones here, you will often be told what the conversion rate is, which in the last example we do, that will be an example of that there. So, a different scale. So, this is more for higher candidates or potentially people moving on to A-level or people interested in physics. This is a very common thing in physics. But our basic metre, as an example, this could happen with grams, this could happen with anything really, but we're going to use metres as our example. So you might be familiar with kilometres and millimetres, but a lot of the area outside of that you probably haven't heard of before. So all that happens is metres are a thousand times smaller than kilometres, so a thousand metres makes up a kilometre. But if you've got a thousand kilometres, that would make a mega metre. And likewise, if you've got a thousand of those, that would be a gigameter. Again, at GCSE, it's highly unlikely that you'll need to know these. But again, for those people interested in beyond GCSE, these would definitely be useful. Okay, now that we've done the scales that are bigger than one meter, if we go the other way, we will be dividing by a thousand. So a thousand millimeters make up a meter, and a thousand micrometers make up a millimeter and a thousand nanometers make up a micrometer. Now this is useful when you're studying things like space, because obviously in space things are a lot further apart and a lot bigger than on Earth. And also in biology, when you're looking at insects and cells and other things like that, a lot of it is based in nano and micrometers because of how small they are. But like I said, don't stress about that too much if you aren't worried about doing anything more than GCSE. So, volume. When we're converting volumes, it can often be quite tricky. So first of all, centimetres to metres is very straightforward. So imagine a one metre line split up into 100 centimetres. That is that. So 100 centimetres equals one metre. Now it gets a little bit more challenging when we introduce squares, because a lot of people think it's the same thing. They will think, oh, 100 centimetres squared is just one metre squared. No. Imagine, instead of a line this time, imagine we have a square. Now, when we're talking about centimetres squared, we're often referring to an area. Imagine we have a one metre squared square. That would be a square that has sides of one metre. And again, if we look at the same line, but think about centimetres, we're going to have 100 centimetres on each of those. So if we're doing the area in terms of metres squared, it's just going to be 1 times 1, which is just going to be 1. However, if we look at that area as centimetres, this time we have 100 by 100. That is actually going to be 10,000 centimetres squared. So quite a jump from the previous conversion. So notice how you multiply by 100 each time. So using that, if you feel confident enough, go ahead and guess what the next one might be. So if we look at finally centimetres cubed to metres cubed, not a line, not a square, this time we'll use an actual cube. So take a look at this cube. Again, if it's in metres, it's a one by one by one metre cube. And again, as before, that's going to make one metre cubed if you're working out the volume. 
But again, if you're working out the volume in centimetres, those ones are now going to become 100s. And that is going to give you 1 million centimetres cubed. So this is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Again, you can see we have times that by 100 again. So this is really important to know. And obviously this can be applied to any unit. It doesn't have to just be centimetres and metres. You might get millimetres. Okay, finally, let's put this into practice. So questions. It is really crucial that you know standard units, the conversions between them. So 100 centimetres in a metre, 1,000 millimetres in a metre, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, that kind of thing. So 270 centimetres in metres. Well, we know that 100 centimetres equals 1 metre. So by simply dividing... 270 by 100, that is going to give us 2.7 metres, just like that. And again, if at any point you feel confident enough to give these a go yourself, please do pause the video and work it out. So, 3,600 seconds in hours. First of all, there is a unit in between these two that we can go to. So, seconds, we can go to minutes, and then to hours. So, we're going to do exactly that. Now we know our hours are a lot bigger than the seconds, so our number should be getting smaller. That is a common mistake that a lot of people make. They know it's 60, but they often will just multiply it rather than dividing it. Or It sounds stupid, but it's an easy mistake to make. So seconds to minutes, we need to divide that by 60, and that will give you 60 minutes. And you might be able to spot it by now, but if we divide by 60 again, 3,600 seconds is simply going to be one hour. Now finally, we have kilograms to grams, so we're going from the bigger unit this time to the smaller unit. So it's always important to think about that, so you know roughly whether your answer is going to be bigger or smaller than the original. So 31 kilograms to grams. So, like I said, kilograms are a lot bigger than grams, so our number is going to be bigger when we multiply it. And kilograms to grams is 1,000. So our final answer is going to be 31,000. Okay, on to a harder question now. So this is a very common one where you'll be given the conversion itself because you're not expected to know it. But how many inches are there in 1.6 metres? So 1.6 metres equals, and we need to work something out from that. So we're given this centimetres here. We do know how to convert between metres and centimetres. So 1.6 metres, if we times that by 100, because 100 centimetres are in a metre, it's going to give us 160 centimetres. Now we also know that 2.5 centimetres equal 1 inch. So, what do we do to get from here to here? So using a calculator, or we could use bus stop. In this case, I think I'll just use a calculator. I don't think they'd expect you to do that in an exam without one. So using our calculator, they've multiplied that by 64 to get from 2.5 to 160. So that must mean we need to times this side by 64 too. And that means that in 160 centimetres, there are 64 inches. And that is how you would solve something like that. Sometimes in a higher paper, they might have two conversions you have to do. So you might have to go from centimetres to inches and then inches to feet or yards. That's a very common one. Um, but there's a lot of imperial units that you're not expected to know, but you need to know how to use them. Okay, thank you very much for watching, and I hope that helped.